Hey guys, what's going on? Matty here from dclblogger.com. Going to be going through a, bu a bunch of different marketplaces in the NFT space. Um, I keep getting asked like, what are the top marketplaces you should be buying NFTs on? And the question to that is not that easy, just because the nature of NFTs allow you to pull the NFT out of the actual you know, project specific marketplace, and then you can sell them on marketplaces like OpenSea, or some markets have their own healthy marketplaces. Um, where it's not part of a broader marketplace like OpenSea, but it's very project specific. Um, so I'll be going through a few popular ones. So OpenSea is definitely an OG, um, one of the first, if not the first uh, NFT marketplace where people could sell NFTs on. So you could launch your own NFT projects. You could, um, you know, pull your NFT out of Decentraland, uh, CryptoPunks, um, you know, Canon Origin and, and sell those art pieces here on OpenSea because remember NFTs are a token and so those token can and because they're on your in your wallet you can kind of do whatever you want with them right so and if uh, OpenSea definitely do a ton of volume you can go to rankings if you go to rankings you can kind of see um, the seven day volume and 11,500 ETH worth of CryptoPunks so I think OpenSea kind of plugs into the the, like the contracts and they read you know the data on blockchain to see how much worth of sales is being made <clears throat> and this is how i kind of start my research i see what projects are going up what projects are going down which projects have been there for a while you can see super is just going crazy um crypto punk is going crazy hash marks has gone nuts um and you can kind of jump into them and see what is going on so if you click on crypto punks um you can see the history you can see uh like you can see the sales that are happening. So if you click on sales, you can see the trading history. So NFTs aren't like you just go to a marketplace and buy what you like. NFTs are you go to a marketplace, you see what category of NFT this is. Is it a collectible? Is it a virtual land? Is it a game item? And then you got to kind of dive into the recent sales so we can see what sales are being made. But you also have to kind of dive into the... Um, you have to dive into the discords so you got to dive into the discord and the community and the chit chat and see what the project is all about so if you go into the cryptopunks discord you can definitely see what's going on you can see like who's buying what which features are kind of rare and, and like what the buzz is all about <clears throat> so OpenSea, you know it starts with kind of i guess checking out volume or projects coming onto your radar and then you kind of have to go to that project so for example like i said cryptopunks you can buy them from the Lava Labs. Lava Labs are the project behind CryptoPunks and you can buy them from here themselves, right? <clears throat> and you see what punks are listed for sale, or the, <coughs> the current cheapest punks, 3.5 Ethereum. And you can see like there's, you know, uh, what else? 15, 30, 60, about 100 of them under 16 Ethereum. And you know, you have an idea of what CryptoPunks are the cheapest going for so that's an interesting part of uh like nft marketplaces is you can go straight to the project so for example like i said you know you can go to axie infinity marketplace and you can see all the, the items sell, being sold here for the axie infinity game you can filter them for land um mystic axes and you can see the cheapest uh lowest price mystic axes yeah 4.8 ethereum <clears throat> or you can go to <coughs> like this is a token remember so i can list this on axie infinity or OpenSea. so generally speaking for games um and certain collectibles OpenSea and project specific marketplaces have been the place where people go and trade but then you've got other marketplaces so art um art has their own marketplaces so super rare known origin maker's place um, nifty gateway um, there's multiple other ones where people go and drop art so artists come and apply they get approved and then they start minting art on these platforms so you can see that um, nifty gateway do drops and every time there's an artist you can see uh, this is from justin moller who i believe is the founder of um, divine art the website um and there's, you know, you can go to Marketplace. You can check out certain, I don't know why my laptop is flashing. I'm really sorry. You can go to Marketplace and then you can kind of search, you know, certain artists. Let's just look at Boss Logic. Um, you can see Boss Logic did an open edition drop. 
and you can see the art pieces that he's sold. Um, you can see what the cheapest art pieces are. Um, and you'll have to do some research and see if Boss Logic has minted art on Super or Known Origin because the nature of NFTs is that it doesn't really matter where they mint or technically it shouldn't. It's just that people are new to the space and so they're all just rushing to either Nifty Gateway, you know, Super or Maker's Place, Known Origin. But, you know, it, it's the NFT, the nature of NFTs, you can kind of sell it at any marketplace. It's kind of like a physical good. So you've got a PlayStation and you can sell it on eBay. You can sell it on Gumtree. You can take that wherever you want and you can sell it. So Nifty Gateway has been a very hot marketplace. In fact, if you go to CryptoArtPulse.com, which is a website I created with a friend of mine, you can see all the sales happening and you can see Nifty Gateway is doing a ton of volume. Most of the sales coming in um, are from Nifty Gateway, even though this picks up sales from anyway. This, you know, you can filter by Super Rare and it'll tell you all the Super Rare sales that are happening. Even this is very, very frequent. Um, but everything's kind of going crazy right now. Um, yeah. And then what you can do is you can search, say as an artist. So we checked out boss logic. Um, let's check out boss logic. And then you can see the recent sale, <clears throat> what it happened for. There's some like random values here, like $0. And sometimes you'll see like $100, but I think that's an issue with the way we're reading data. So just, just be aware of that. But you can see the sales that are happening. You can see the, the OB piece. There's only 63 of them. <coughs> you can search boss logic, then you can filter it to OB and you can kind of see the price appreciation. It looks like from Jan 30th, it's, you know, from Jan 17th, it's kind of blowing up. Um, you can see, yeah. Um, what's going on there? So that's kind of how you do your research and marketplaces are just, I guess, where things are listed, but you have to kind of do your research as to the sales history of stuff. There's multiple websites for that as well. Like I said, NBA Top Shot, uh, not, not NBA Top Shot, nonfungible.com is a very good website, which was really early to the scene. And these guys have a sales feed for multiple projects and you can search, you know, CryptoPunks, you can create uh, search super rare. So let's just click on CryptoPunks. And you can see um, where all the recent sales are coming from or what they are. So 20 ETH, 15 ETH, 13.5. And you can click this to see why they're selling for that much. And you know, there's just a, <clears throat> a ton of stuff you can do. There's a, there's a ton of stuff you can really get involved with. Um, but it also starts with a lot of sales history. So the marketplaces are quite project specific. So the art industry has its own marketplaces, which you can start doing research from Crypto Art Pulse. Um, and then you can go to these art places, for example, they're all kind of different. Nifty Gateway have multiple things. They've got open editions, they've got silent auctions, they've got single editions, they've got bidding, they've got uh, multi editions. Super Rare, I believe, are still just one of ones in the sense of everything here is unique. Everything here is a single edition piece. There's not multiple mints of it. Uh, makers and non-known -or origin have multi and single. But I believe these three you have to kind of apply to get in. Now, Rarible is an interesting one. Rarible kind of opens the door for anyone to come and mint and sell. So that's why you've got like Lindsay Lohan. You had Mark Cuban come in. Um, you've got like, you know, personalities that come in. They don't have to go through any application. They can just list and sell straight away. And so it's kind of been a little bit of wash trading and, and all kinds of stuff happening because as you buy and sell on Rarible, you also farm the Rari token. So people have been doing all sorts of funny stuff. But uh, at the end of the day, they're a pretty cool um, platform that's open for anyone to come in and start minting. The nature of decentralization is that let the community decide what's fair and what's not. So the cool thing is that, you know, it's open so anyone can come in, start minting straight away, which is great. You can see some uh, big artists here like Pac, um, who's on pretty much everything, Nifty Gateway and all that sort of stuff. So he's on here and you don't know where artists are selling. So the same artist may have multiple profiles on multiple uh, platforms. As an artist, um, if you're getting into it new, it's kind of confusing, I guess, what to do and where to mint from. But just know that OpenSea and Rarible have no application process. So you can kind of jump in straight away and start minting art. Um, Super Rare and Known Origin are kind of seen or perceived as exclusive. And then they've got this application process. So you have to kind of apply to get in and then invest or, or make art, uh, all that sort of stuff. So there's that part of things as well. So I'm not going to say which one's best because it's really all experimental at the moment. Um, like I said, different marketplaces have their own 
thing. So Decentraland land predominantly is traded on Decentraland itself. So if you go to Decentraland marketplace, you can see the recently listed, the cheapest listed, um, or the cheapest for sale. You can go through different estates. Um, you can actually click on the marketplace itself and, and go through which lands are for sale where. You can jump into the land to see what's in it. Um, you know, that's all very project specific. I don't think many people list their land on OpenSea. Although OpenSea is pretty cool because OpenSea has this thing where you can sell it, you can do a private deal. So you can list something for sale, but are restricted. So a certain address or a certain buyer can buy it only. So you can list it. And so it's locked so that a buyer you negotiated with previously can buy it on OpenSea. Um, people use OpenSea to mint a lot of stuff and sell on OpenSea itself. Um, so that's pretty cool. OpenSea is kind of like this, yeah, decentralized platform where you can run your own NFT project and do all sorts of things. So, um, what else do we have, guys? We got NBA Top Shots. Obviously, that's blowing up. So, Crypto Slam is a great website to kind of get a snapshot as to what's going nuts. Um, if you go to CryptoSlam.io, which is the main page, you can kind of see. Uh, again, like a feed of what the top sales are for the last 24 hours, 77 days, 30 days, um, all time. And based on what's going crazy, you can kind of jump in and figure out what's going on. So if you click on NBA Top Shot, you can see all the recent sales that are happening right now. So all the live sales going on um, once this loads. I think it's because there's just so much happening with NBA Top Shot. But you don't buy it from Crypto Slam, right? You can you gotta go to NBA Top Shot, you go to their marketplace, you kind of do research as to which moments you want to buy and buy it from there. So it's kind of like the best marketplaces, in my opinion, are the most established ones. So crypto uh, OpenSea is probably the most established one. Variable came out onto the scene and, and are also an open marketplace that people sell art, people sell Pretty much all sorts of things it kind of started with art but you can see people are selling all sorts of things even domain names um and then you know there's project or industry specific marketplaces so there's nifty gateway super rare non origin makers place and stuff for art and then there's the game specific ones like axie infinity um then engine and wax have their own uh, marketplaces so wax marketplace which i really need to mention because it is um important so Wax have their own marketplace and then Engine have their own marketplace for engine specific games. And here you can, you know, you can buy Street Fighter packs right now, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can see the, you can, you can kind of lock it to the project to see what's going on. So Alien Worlds, what's going on in Alien Worlds, listings, um, lowest to highest, and you can buy it from here in Wax tokens. So, you know, there is, the more you kind of dive into the NFT space, you realize that, it's just a massive overall buying and selling investing space for like the crazy part of the crypto industry. So the, the, the crypto industry where they buy and sell the RC20, uh, cryptocurrency tokens. And then there's the NFT land, which may take some time to understand and digest. But once you get it and you know that you want to get into super uh, street fighter or say you, you know that you want to get into, um, you know, decentralized land, then you got to kind of find where those are listed and those are other product specific or open marketplaces like Wax, like Engine, like OpenSea, like Wearable. So I hope that gives a bit of clarity. Um, every now and then a new marketplace pops up and it does cool things. Remember, you could also shard or fractionalize things. So I just want to quickly mention the NFTX and Niftex. So Niftex, well, both of them are an interesting way to invest. So for example, punks, you can just buy and supply punks and buy tokens or, or um, you can see that uh, punk core. So one redeem 10,000 punk core. So one punk redeems 1,000 punk core. Um, and it's a different way to kind of invest in the punk assets, right? And Niftex as well, you can kind of fractionalize things. Um, so you can see people have fractionalized different things. This guy, this guy has fractionalized his Axie Infinity um, thing uh, item, and you can see it has its own marketplace. So you can now invest in a fraction or an ERC20 um, token on that project so there's all these kind of creative ways that people are also starting to invest um and you can also invest in i guess the cryptocurrency so for example decentraland have mana token uh sandbox the sand token rari have rarible have rari tokens so you can invest in the whole ecosystem but 
yeah, just a few words on the marketplaces. Hope that's not confusing you, but giving you a bit more clarity. Um, but every time I go through an NFT space uh, video, I kind of have to start broad and go in because there's just so much to cover. But hope this helped and I'll see you guys in another video.